Oh yeah, I'm about to go in, about to go in. Hey, how's it going, fellas? This is Brian, aka Uncle B, with, oh, we got a banger for you today. We're talking about morning routine for your morning wood. I want to welcome everybody to the show. Uh, if you could go into the comment sections and just let me know uh, where you are representing, where you're coming from. Uh, um, and yeah. Yeah, we're going to talk about some very interesting stuff. I mean, you know, today I've been getting it in. Uh, did my five mile walk this morning. Woo. And then just came from a Gold's Burn class. So uh, I'm feeling it. <laughs> I'm feeling some type of way. What's going on, Terrence? Oklahoma in the house. Tulsa in the house. Uh huh. Haiti. All right. All right, sir. Glad to see you here, Kenneth. Uh huh. Port Harcourt, Nigeria. We are international. We are international. Oh, man. And we have a very important topic to talk about today because this is when you know that you are a 10, a 10 on the sexual performance scale. Uh, for those guys who do not know, uh, that's a scale of 1 to 10. 10 means that you everything works. That means you wake up and you are up. Uh-huh. Uh, Zacchaeus Wilson. All right. VA. Yes, it has been a while. It has been a while. Hey, we've been doing some things on this side. Um, you know, we're always looking to improve. We're about to roll out a whole new thing, a whole new. Th I don't want to give away too much uh, up front. Um, but for those guys who are new to me, to what we do around here, my name is Brian, a.k.a. Uncle B. And we talk about men's sexual health. Um, you know, we try to make it entertaining. We try to make it fun. We try to make it light. But we're talking about a serious issue um it's becoming more and more serious because of the way that we're living uh-huh we got more people from nigeria in the house yes sir <laughs> yes sir appreciate you um it's it's amazing you know when i go around i just did a podcast earlier today uh talking to people who you know they're they're about that life they're about the the whole thing of fitness and everything i talked to a guy who's actually a world-class uh, uh martial arts uh expert he's been doing things for years and everybody's story is interesting. I mean, his story is all about him. You know, he's been going around the world doing all this stuff, but he messed himself up early in life because he was taking steroids. Um, and then he stressed out his body by traveling and, you know, he was competing all around the world and he just stressed his whole body out. And now he's taking testosterone uh, replacement therapy. Uh, not a good look, not a good look. So, you know, my whole goal for you is to make sure that whatever part of your life is not working correctly, that we get that in line right now <laughs> so that you don't have any problems going to the into the future. True business, South Florida in the house. South Florida in the house. I love it. Hey, uh, also, um, what we're doing here uh, up there towards the top of the comment section, we actually have a way for you to hop on and talk to me. You can actually turn your camera off. You, you don't have to uh, be cammed up. You know, if you want to have a conversation, um, if you want to, if you have some specific questions, that's a great way to get in. So uh, without further ado, because I do want to go into something a little bit later, we're going to talk about the morning routine for your morning wood. But I want to get into some more uh, extra special uh, stuff, some some things, some some mindset uh, principles that you need to have if you're trying to get better with your life overall, period. But let's go ahead and hop into it because we're talking about morning erections, which is the highest level of your sexual health. Um, um, like I said, the sexual performance scale is that scale of one to 10. 10 means everything works. You're having morning erections, erections on demand, spontaneous erections, et cetera. If you're at a one, you're not having erections at all. You need to go to a hospital. Most guys I work with are between a five and seven. When I say I work with, we do coaching, we do group coaching. You know, uh, um, I have the, obviously, I have the YouTube channel. And if you're not a member of our YouTube channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, even if you are a member of the channel, uh, you're a subscriber, go ahead and hit that like button right now. That helps out a whole bunch. I really do appreciate it. Um, so yeah, back to it. So when we're talking about your morning routine for morning wood, you have to move up the sexual performance scale. So really the question is, where are you right now on that scale, a scale of one to 10? Most guys, like I said, are five to seven. That's a, a five means that, you know, it takes a lot of work to get uh, an erection. A six is just a little bit above that. You know, you're 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 better, but you know it, it's 
still takes a lot of work for things to get going. And a seven, you just never know. You're playing Russian roulette with your own erection. It's one morning, one day, you know, everything's good. The next day, it's not. It's really all about your patterns. What's going on, Jeremy? What's going on? So, uh, let's see. Get myself situated here. Um, so, uh, once again, let's go ahead and break that scale down just a little bit more. When we're talking about uh, your sexual performance, if you're an eight or nine, you really don't need African Fly. For those guys who don't know, African Fly is all natural liquid aphrodisiac. Came up with this product a good 23 years ago. Uh, people around the world loved it, but the issue was some guys it didn't work for. And it was like, how, this is how I got into doing all this coaching because it's a supplement and you're supposed to supplement the other things you're doing. That's what we're talking about right here. So if you're eight to nine, you don't necessarily need African fly. If you want to show off, go ahead and take it. <laughs> but if you're a six to seven, um, that means that you're basically you're on the downward spiral. You know, you, you would. If you were like, you know, the, at the peak of your sexual activity, you you know, you're just getting erections when you're much younger. Over time, it can start going down. So what you really want to make sure that ha that happens is that you're in control and that you're slowing this process down. Because if you get to a two to a four on the scale, it's really hard to go to get back up. You have to nail everything perfectly in order for stuff to happen. Uh huh. Ah, true business talking about using a pump. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do a rain dance off a sacrifice. <laughs> <My man. laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. If you don't know what you do, um, you're going to have to do some rain dances. <laughs> All right. Mexico in the house. International. I'm telling you guys, we're international here. So let's talk about those morning erections. It's a sign that you are sexually healthy. Um, you are that 10 out of 10. Um, you are... You know, when you're talking about your erections, it's also a sign of your overall health. When you're younger, you just have that natural energy that's there. As you get older, not only is your testosterone going down by 1% per year, uh, somewhere between the age of 21 to 25. And, you know, when that process starts happening, you can accelerate it by doing the wrong things in life, uh, eating too much. I mean, you know, we... Western life, we got the endless wings. We got uh, uh, we got breakfast first thing in the morning with everything that slows down your testosterone. It's, it's just easy to get into the wrong uh, area. And the, the thing to understand is the bursting and burning of testosterone, that's what fuels your erections. If you don't have those erections, um, that's because your testosterone just isn't there. There's some other things, but basically you do have to understand your testosterone, take care of it, and your testosterone builds while you're asleep. So that's the reason why you have morning erections. We're talking about your circadian rhythms, just the way the sun goes up, you go up. Sun goes down, you go down, you go to sleep. Um, so you need to understand that you, when we're talking about your morning erections, we're talking about your level of health. So when we're talking about your morning routine, what can you do to get to the morning erections all the time? Well, you need to nail it down. The goal is to create a routine that you can stick with. And it becomes a normal part of your life. That's how you're boosting your testosterone. Um, you know, success is in consistency. Whenever we talk about people who are consistent, you look at LeBron James, you look at Michael Jordan, uh, Tiger Woods, uh, Serena, all these people are consistent with their practice. They're there. The first one's there, the last one's to leave, all of that stuff. So you have to be consistent with it also. So when we're talking about what you can do, the first thing you can do as soon as you wake up, your your mind is in between dreaming and, you know, and waking up. So your mind is actually very, uh, uh, can absorb information. So at that point, that's when you want to be your own life coach. Wake up and start thinking about what you're grateful for. This is pre-programming your brain to say, hey, this is good. This is good. This is good. This is good. What does that do? That lowers your cortisol. If you're waking up in stress every morning, you know, first of all, most, most of us have, we have that alarm going off to get us to the job or whatever we're doing. And it's like, well, that's, you get stressed first thing, you know, because eh, eh, all that irritating stuff that's going on. Um, and then some people will immediately look at their phone and then they'll immediately go to, oh, email. Oh, what's going on in the news? Oh, you're stressing yourself out first thing in the morning and that's setting you up for failure because your testosterone is supposed to be going up with time. You're actually slowing it down with that cortisol. Uh, one of the things you do want to do is wake up at the same time every morning because your body likes patterns. One thing, two things, thing, three things. It's consequences. So if you're, you're not having the erections that you're supposed to have, it's because of consequences. You actually 
when we talk about consequence, con means with sequence. So there's a sequence that's off. And that's what we're talking about. Hey, you got Raphael in the house. He's uh, hopped on. Sir, hold on for me. We'll get to you and get to your questions. Good deal. Glad to see you in there. Uh, once again, that's from the link. If you want to hop on, just go ahead and click on the link. and We'll get talking to you. Um, so, yeah, uh, you do not want to look at your phone. You also want to do that meditation. Be grateful. And also one great thing to do, I do, is to review your goals. Uh, you know, not your stress goals, the goals that you, you know, let's say, ah, I'm looking at doing something great in my life, had that already set up. Then we get into intermittent fasting. Basically, we're talking about skipping breakfast. Be why would you do something like that? Well, it's because when you're asleep, your testosterone is building, your human growth hormones, hormones are building. And as you're going through the day, as soon as you eat something, that process stops. The most important thing for your body to do is to deal with what you put into your mouth because it could be helpful and it'll also be poisonous. Now I'm going to, going to say some things that are going to mess with your brain. All right. How do you lose weight? If I lost like 100 pounds, like recently I lost like, what, 60 pounds? If you lose 60 pounds, where does it go? Does it come out your, the back of your ankle as fat? you got a trail of fat. How is it happening? Basically, it's your breath. So 84% of your weight loss is coming out through your breath. You're just basically a windbag. Now, the other 16% is urination and defecation and sweatation. So let's look at defecation because a lot of times when I ask this question, people are like, well, uh, did, I, did I shit it out? <laughs> like, nah. no, actually, think of it this way. 70% of your defecation, your shit, is water. The other is, uh, the other 30% is uh, fecal, not fecal, uh, bacterial biomass. So if you think of it this way, you eat something that's solid and only roughly 2% of it comes out as solid. The rest of it comes out as air and liquid and sweat, which is liquid. So, you know, you need to understand, when, once you understand that concept, now it's like, oh, what am I putting into my body? Am I putting in energy, you know, and how long am I allowing the energy to digest? into my system so you know it comes back out. So that's that should be helpful and for you to understand, you know, when we're doing intermittent fasting, it's allowing your body to get itself together. You put food in, it has to turn it into air. So if you're putting a lot of dead things into your body, it takes a, a lot of process things, it takes longer for your body to process it and it causes issues. So you can do intermittent fasting and also you can do workouts first thing in the morning when you're doing those workouts. Whoo. Uh, I just did a workout after, you know, in the evening. I normally don't work out in the evenings, but if you're eating during the day. So, you know, I did my uh, uh, my intermittent fasting and then I ate and then I worked out and it was a completely different workout from working out first thing in the morning. Because when you're working out fast, your stomach is empty. Your stomach doesn't have anything to well, we call it weighing it down, but what it's actually doing is processing. That's the reason why they tell you not to go swimming right after you eat because your body is still processing the food and you're doing more activity. So you're doing two, at, two workouts at the same time. So I just came back from doing two workouts at the same time. <laughs> it's tiring. It's tiring, guys. It is tiring. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Psycho 496 in Mexico. What's going on? All right. So one of the other uh, types of training you can do is high intensity interval training. That's training for like, you know, uh, 30 seconds on, 15 seconds off. Um, the main key there is intensity. That's how you change your body. If you're looking to make a change in your erections, you have to make a change in your body. And by having intensity to it, you you cause more of a rapid change. Uh, obviously, there's a difference between a world-class sprinter and a world-class walker and a world-class couch sitter. There's <laughs> obvious differences going on there. So what else can you do? Of course, you can take African Fly, the all-natural liquid aphrodisiac. Obviously, I'm going to recommend that um, because it increases your testosterone naturally. We call it a uh, natural testosterone solid. It uh, has eight different herbs, so it's going to help that. It also helps you with stamina. So if you're trying to get morning workouts or you're trying to you know, work her out first thing in the morning, you got more stamina. Um, and it helps you move up the sexual performance scale. But the, once again, it is a supplement. It's a su supposed to supplement the other things that we're talking about right now. Um, so what you eat coming out of that fast is also very important. Um, 
And I did a vid, I've done videos on your gut and testosterone and things like that. But if the first thing that you should eat should be as healthy as possible, you're setting up your body for the rest of the day. Uh, for my guys who are trying to change up their diet completely and trying to get healthier, it's hard to do if you don't do this one technique. Start eating fruit or vegetables or a salad before you eat your regular meal. The reason for that is as you're getting this, uh, the, the nutrients into your body, your body's like, oh, I have a nutrient. I have the nutrients. I'm not as hungry. And, you know, it's working better for your body. So it makes way more sense if you do that. I can I can go into way more detail, but I want to make sure I get to uh, some of the questions that we have coming up in here, coming in here. Um, and one of the things I always talk about is doing what I call morning worship. And that's before you go to sleep, you want to take time to set yourself up for the next day. Um, you know, it's it's like, you know, I look for the perfect morning. It's like I'm waking up. It's like my gym clothes are already set up to go. Uh, I, you know, basically the only thing I need to do is just roll over, maybe make up my bed, get myself, you know, cleaned up and everything and go to the gym. Um, you know, whatever your routine is. If it's, you know, if you got kids to take care of, the more you have them set up, if you have lunch already set up for yourself, if you're going to going to work, uh, you got your clothes already set up, all these different things just make your morning easier. And all you're doing is just setting it up the night before you're actually going to like it. Even things such as writing down what activities and tasks you have to do the next day. It's better, especially for us guys like myself. I have problems sleeping. If you write out what you're doing the next day, you don't have to think about it. And one extra special tip, uh, tip right here, think what you think about before you go to sleep stays in your head all the way until you wake up. So if you're thinking about something that's stressful, your brain is going to say, well, I've got to keep thinking about it because it's stressful. We, you know, when we wake back up, we will, we, maybe we'll have it figured out. You, you don't want to do that. You don't want to stress yourself while you're sleeping because you want your testosterone to be going up, not your cortisol. So um, that's what you can do. So, all right. Uh huh. Claude White, Yohembe. Yes, yes. <laughs> African Claude does have Yohembe, which is the, the bark of a tree, along with cinnamon, which is the bark of a tree, along with clove buds, which comes from a tree, along with, with ginger root. We're talking about a whole bunch of trees here. Uh huh. Are there any side effects for African fly? Yeah, the two main side effects are one, it is a stimulant. So if you take it late in the evening, it will keep you awake. Uh, the other one is that it's going to move the blood from your hands and your feet to your uh, your genital regions. So, I mean, that's how you get more blood, more blood flow. So your hands and your feet will feel uh, cooler. Um, now, you know, in terms of if you go to AfricanFly.com, we go into detail about the type of men who should not be taking African fly. Uh, it does work well for guys who have uh, diabetes, guys who have high blood pressure. Uh, but we... I want to be very careful here. Uh, we're talking about people who have, who, if you're taking care of yourself, not just dealing with medication, and you're just going to put Africa fly on top of that. I don't recommend that at all. Uh, you have to supplement the supplements. All right. Uh huh. If you lose weight, are you also losing testosterone? Only if you're doing it in the wrong way. Uh, the vast majority of times when people are. Uh, losing weight, you're actually going to increase your testosterone. In fact, if your um, your body fat percentage is over 25%, then that could, you're on the way to having um, erection issues. So you want to keep your body fat percentage below 25% so that you're all good. Uh huh. All right. Let me go ahead and hop in and pull up my man, Raphael Hardwick. Hey, Raphael, let's see if we can get you up on here. Hello. Hey, hey, how you doing today, sir? I'm good. How are you? I've been watching you for the longest. <laughs> you are you're like you're like the best the best man <laughs> to ever talk about sexual health. I appreciate that, man. Dude, like I'm I'm being serious because like a lot of, a lot of the things that you be saying, I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> but I, but I want to ask you this question, okay? Because I'm literally like struggling mm -hmm. here in this area. Because I know you gotta eat a lot of food. I'm struggling to like eat live food, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and 
I like the I'm well first off, I'm vegan. So okay. I do eat hmm. salads and stuff. But hmm. you know, now we're going through a what I like to call a food shortage. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of the times I can't really, you know, find like I go on Walmart.com. I'm looking mm. for salads. I'm looking for, you know, because I know what to do. You have gave us the steps to follow. <laughs> and I try to follow them to a T. And that's another thing. Like, what do you suggest for a person like me, mm -hmm. which I have I know what to do, but it's like I fall off at a period. I okay. fall off. Well, I guess uh, the question is, you know, what is your, your ultimate goal? So, I mean, you know, that's great that you're vegan, uh, obviously. Um, and, you know, the whole trick of doing anything, it's, it's about <laughs> habits. It's about routines. And I understand this seriously because, you know, um, at one point I hit 285 pounds and my habits were awful. <laughs> and you yeah. know the, the turnaround for me was really about that thought process of okay where is I want to get to you know for me I want to get to the point where you know uh, not having drinks is not a problem uh, not going to McDonald's at, at night like I used to do <laughs> is, is no longer a thought process and, you know um, it's for me for me for me the meat was making me sick because mm -hmm. I used to be like you like eat meat all the time and so i i just found and i and i did this based off of you that's why i say you're definitely sent from god <laughs> i did a experiment on myself mm. as far as i want to see i said let me see how good let me see if i don't eat the meat versus when i do uh-huh yeah. And one of the and, things that, one of the things that and, you'll you'll end up noticing, um I, I just want to throw this in right quick before you before you go. Um it, I call it food injuries. And so, you know, when you start yeah. eating things that are not, you know, yeah, you heard me talk about this for those guys who don't know. Um it, when you are eating something and you are uh you feel pain, you haven't gone running, you haven't done anything, you just feel pain, that's your that's your body telling you that what you just ate isn't good for you. Um, and you know, the, the thing is to remember that pain. Uh, so for me, it's like, you know, I got salmon, I got different things that keep adding to the list. You know, I had some shrimp the other day and it was like immediately my toe was like, Hey, you're not going to, no, no. Yeah. And it was, it was my mama's shrimp. That's the only reason why I ate shrimp. I don't eat shrimp anymore, but it was mama. <laughs> so but go ahead, man. But I, I've literally just stop eating meat in total, but I feel like I still because I have a problem with like vegan burgers and things mm -hmm. like that. So yeah. it's just it's just like, man, and it's like it's hard because you like, what am I supposed to eat? And everybody keeps telling me now that I'm vegan that I don't eat meat. You gonna just be eating trees, and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's it's a struggle. Uh, you know, I understand completely. Um, you know, going to different restaurants, I have to sort of map it out, see what's there that I can eat beforehand. Um, and, you know, and have people around me who are supportive of that. Um, but you know, it's it's one of those things that because the way the world is set up, that's the reason why we have so many guys who are sick. And so you're doing the right things in terms of uh, setting stuff up uh, correctly to make sure you get the information. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, what I would say is uh, just keep going on that journey. It's going to take time. This is a lifelong thing for, for all my guys out there. This is a lifelong thing. Oh, we lost Raphael. Uh, this is a lifelong process. Do not think that it's like, oh, OK, you know, I'm going to make this change. And I'm going to do it for the next 30 days. And then, you know, it's going to be all good. It's like, um, you know, we are not in a situation where it gets easier. You're going to get older. It's going to get more difficult. So it's better to put all the routines in place 
so that, you know, you hit your goal. I mean, four, five years ago, there's no way you could have told me that I would go walking five miles first thing in the morning, not eat until three o'clock, uh, eat fruits and vegetables. What I have? I had a peach. I had, uh, 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 I made, um, you know, asked some, had some cooked food. I made some, um, uh, some vegetables, rice, et cetera, et cetera. And then go to, you know, go burn, uh, go to the gym and do a, a burn workout. I mean, that would have been impossible. <laughs> it would have been painful five years ago. But I mean, that's the type of change that you need to make in your life. So good deal. Good deal. Hey, hey I want to thank you, Raphael, for hopping on. Anybody else? Uh, we do have that link. Uh, let me see if I can throw it back in here. You do not have to cam up. Uh, we just want to hear from you. So go ahead and hit that link. Uh huh. So Claude, I have, uh, I'm having a beet arugula spinach and maca smoothie. <laughs> and my man, yes, yes, Raphael, that's my man right there. Um, uh, but yeah, that sounds good, man. That that sounds good. Um, just a couple of quick things when it comes to smoothies. I just want to make sure uh, we're on the, all on the same page. You want to make sure you're blending it and you're not juicing it. And the difference between juicing is that, you know, I have a juice machine and I'm ready to give it away because it actually takes the fiber out and you actually want to get the fiber in. So when you're using a blender, it keeps the fiber in. Fiber uh, will help you feel full and it's actually the process that moves stuff through your body. So you have to have fiber. Basically, our body runs on, off of fiber. Uh huh. All right, Guyana in the house. <laughs> All right. Yes. Smooth. Um, yes. Hey, hey, thanks. I'm glad to be back. Glad to be back. Uh, Mr. Vinny, let's see, what'd you say there? Are there any long-term effects of using African Fly? Not sure how long or when to stop using. Also, I enjoy the opening soundtrack. Yeah, that's Crank Lucas, straight out of Washington, D.C. So um, I have used African Fly more than anybody on the planet. I'm still alive, <laughs> still healthy, <laughs> um, and things work. So, um, you know, when it comes to African Fly, it is like a... A, a, a testosterone salad, you know, is it's natural. It's not going to get to a point where it's like, you know, going to be detrimental. Obviously, you could take anything too far. Uh, I actually drank like a about two ounces at one point just to see what would happen. And you know, it's like drinking too much orange juice. Your body's like, well, I'm going to use this, and the rest of it, I'm just going to piss out. So uh, it, it's not worth doing it like that. Uh, mm -hmm. SBO can. Oh, one other thing as far as uh, taking African fly, doing everything that, you know, I, this is a weird thing. My CFO, uh, chief financial officer, hates when I say this, but all these classes, all these videos, the books, and everything like that is to teach you how to stop using African fly. It's an all natural product. It, I mean, we're actually taking bark off of trees. So, you know, I don't think it's prudent for us to. Uh, <laughs> destroy the the planet by uh everybody you know being stuck on taking a supplement i mean it's better than taking uh, uh pharmaceuticals better than taking those gas station pills but yeah yeah you don't you know move on <laughs> uh take african fly take the information get better and keep it pushing uh-huh uh ah man from nigeria bro i want to say your name let me say ephraim 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 uh, bro, what's the African fly like? A drug or a syrup? African fly is an all natural liquid product. Hey, uh, fans, can you hook me up with the bottle? Yeah. Uh, and it's a tincture. So it's a uh, liquid, and basically you can just uh, take it and like, sir. Boom, right here. You can, uh, yeah. and you know, you can just, is this open? Yeah. There we go. Yep. You just, it's in a drop of top like this. You could put it under your tongue. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, I'm not going to take it right now because I do want to go to sleep. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's like that. It's not, it's not medication at all. Uh, we don't, we don't, we try to uh, avoid taking medications. We want to go with what's natural. All right. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, SBO kennels. Uh, what about pomegranate juice? Pomegranate is great. Um, I'll be careful with just taking pomegranate juice when you're eating actual pomegranate seeds. You know, it has fiber, it has a lot of roughage inside of it. You know, it may not be to your liking initially, but, you know, keep popping them suckers and you'll really like it. When you're when you're taking juice um, of anything, especially that's the reason why I just talked about juicing things. When you're taking the fiber out, you're getting a lot of sugar. And we're supposed to only get 
so, yeah, it, the World Health Organization is sort of changing their numbers, but it's like they're recommending like five to 10 grams of sugar a day. Most people are, I forgot what the number is, it's a ridiculous number of pounds of sugar per day, uh, per year, pounds. So, um, and one thing I was just on a podcast earlier today talking about this, um, it's been like uh, 1,400. Hey, Chris, we're going to hop on. Oh, Chris hopped on, hopped off. Um, it's, uh, sugar's only been with humans for the past 1,400 years in terms of how long we've been on this planet. If we took that into uh, hours, as we took that into 24 hours in a day, that's actually 0.6 seconds. So sugar is really new. And um, for our, the generation that's coming up, you know, um, for folks who were, you know, growing up back in the day, they people got to I, I grandma stories of grandmothers who would uh, <laughs> make their iced tea so thick with syrup that she, you know, catch a diabetic fit right off the bat. <laughs> but, you know, it's not it's not good for you. So we're going to be very careful with that. So, yeah, Claude. Claude says blending. Actually, that's very good. You got to blend it. Get that fiber in there. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Ah, Zacchaeus Wilson. I, I believe uh, I blend the seeds as well. Lots of nutrients in the seeds. Yeah. And that's a, um, another thing about fruits and vegetables, period. You know, we eat the parts that we're told to eat. Uh, but there's nutrients in, in all parts of it. So, you know, even with potatoes, when you get those pot uh, mashed potatoes, uh, be careful with that. There's a lot of sugar in that. But, uh, you know, a lot of the nutrients is in the skin. Uh, with watermelon, a lot of the nutrients is in the, uh, the rind. So, yeah, yeah, there we go. All right. So, yeah, we do have that link there if you want to hop on. Oh, yep. Uh, if you do want to hop on, we'll be able to get back to you. Um, but there's one thing I do want to make sure that I talk about uh, really quickly, and that is uh, something that Raphael uh, brought up. And it's like, how do you get to the point where you're able to take care of something, take care of things? Let me break down the meaning of life. And if you go and look at Wikipedia, their definition, I, I have no idea what they're talking about. But to me, the meaning of life is control. And it's like, basically, it shows up in everyday life. So if you look at a baby, of course, they have no control. By the time they are two, they've gained so much control, but have so little control that they're out of control. And by the time they're 10, they're able to, you're in control enough, you can stay at home by yourself. By the time you're in your, your teens, once again, you have so much control, but you're being limited with this control that you get back out of control. By the time you're in your 20s, oh, you're in control. By the time you're in your 30s, you're like, whoo, <laughs> this is a lot of control. <laughs> okay. Okay. When you're in your 40s, you're like, okay, I'm tired of this much. Why I got to control everything? Why can't I have some fun? By the time you're in your 50s, it's like, okay, uh, this is, I'm losing control. What's going on here? I'm, uh, I'm just trying to hold on to control. In your 60s, control is just leaving 70s, 80s, et cetera. So it's really important that you have a level of control. And control, men, takes discipline. And part of that discipline is being able to see your own patterns. We talked about before is consequences. It's consequences to what you do. Uh, that's why I took up the habit of, you know, in my weight loss journey now, it's like I weigh myself every day so that every morning I wake up, it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to hop on the scale and I'm holding myself accountable. Do I want to look at this scale and it says something good to me or it says something bad to me? And I can immediately look, at, look back at the, the night before. Did I get my sleep? You basically lose more weight while you're asleep than anything. Um, and, you know, it's uh, I'm looking at what did I eat? What is the pattern? Did I work out? Did I not, not work out? Am I overtraining? You know, all of these things will show up immediately. So you need to do the same thing. That's the reason why we have um, the ECS 25 system. Um, you can actually go to ECS 25. That's E-S-E-I-S -E 25. That is the coaching program that I came up with. That stands for energy, sleep, exercise, intermittent fasting, and soul. And what you do every day is you set goals in these five areas and you score yourself every day in these five areas. So if you don't do something, you get a zero. You do do something, you get a five. Flow for energy. If you need to, uh, yeah, I'm going to start eating a fruit with every meal and that's your goal. You hit that goal, you get a five. You say, hey, I need to uh, go to sleep on time at the same time every night. You hit that goal, you get a five. And say like, exercise. Well, I was supposed to exercise a day. I didn't exercise, so I get a zero. You see, the, that's how you score yourself. And, excuse me, 
when you're able to do that, you just get to a point where it's uh, it's just healthier for you. You have to understand what's going on to in order to have control. And of course, the crazy thing about you know this meaning of life, the opposite. If you do not control yourself, other people will control you. It's called jail. <laughs> it's called uh, 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 you know all types of things. When you're a kid, it's called detention, spanking. Someone's going to control you. And the unfortunate thing is that when it comes to the way that we're living right now, no one's trying to control you because they're, they're making money off of you. If you think about it, if you get sick, everyone else gets paid except you. You're paying out. They're getting the money from you. You're talk, we're talking about people from, you know, the, the hospital to the gas, pay, gas station pill people. Um, you know, and, and here's something that's actually crazy. In terms of the pharmaceutical companies, they actually make more money selling antibiotic, antibiotics to the farmers for the cows and the pigs and the sheep and, you know, whatever. They make more money selling antibiotics to them than they do to selling to human beings. So get this. They're selling it to the animals. We consume the antibiotics that we're eating when we eat animals. That gets to our stomach. It destroys our own gut lining. It destroys what breaks down the food for us. And then we get sick. So we're eating the animals. We're getting sick. And then we go to the hospital where they sell us more drugs. See how that, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the whole big setup. That's what they do around here. Uh huh. Hey, what's going on, Robin? Hey, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, David Cooper. Hey, I'm 54 years old and been waking up with morning wood on the regular. Can I still have ED issues? Um, that's an interesting one. If you're having uh, morning erections, but uh, it sounds like you're saying that you don't have erections when you want to, I would guess like erections on demand. That may be more of a psychological uh, situation. So basically, if a person is having, while you're asleep, you have five erections, four to five erections. That fifth one is typically the morning erection. So uh, if you're asleep and you have erections, that means it's, it's not a physical issue. It comes to a mental issue. It could also come to, you know, your timing. So we talk about partner ED and we talk about, you know, this testosterone cycle. So partner ED is basically, you know, uh, you you go to work, you come home, you see homegirl, like, uh, but you're stressed. You just came out of traffic, everything like that. And, you know, she's like, hey, how you doing? She's she's there. And you're like, oh, I'm still stressed. So you go back to work, come home, come, come, come back home, you going through this whole routine, you're constantly seeing her, constantly seeing her, and you're you're thinking stressful thoughts and you're seeing her, and now you your brain is linking those two things. When you see her, you're thinking stress. So there's issues with that. There's also issues with uh, you know, if you're having um sexual issues in terms of like, hey, one day your performance, let's say you were seven in terms of uh in your on the sexual performance scale, sometimes you're on, no problem. Sometimes you're off, what just happened? If you have enough times when you're off and you start getting into your head and saying, okay, I hope it works now. Is it going to work this time? Was it, is she, ooh, okay, she walked into the room. I should be hard now. Uh, she touched you. I should be hard now. Uh, she, that's, that's actually a problem called spectatoring. Spectatoring is when you're actually uh, um, thinking about your erections so much, you're increasing your cortisol. You're stressing yourself out. You're actually just being self-conscious. And the way to do that is to stop doing that uh, um, because your body naturally cycles with erections. It's like, you know, uh, uh, when you were didn't have problems before, when this wasn't an issue, you didn't pay attention to your erections at all. It just showed up when it showed up. It's still going to do the exact same thing as long as you're taking care of your body. So uh, don't have all your information. That's the reason why I wanted to go ahead and run through that. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Uh, thank you for my for my team putting that uh, link in there. ECS25.com. Please check it out. Uh-huh. Uh, is the affiliate program still available? Mr. Vinny007. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, if you get our, uh, if you're on our subscriber list for AfricanFly.com, um, we're always sending out the affiliate information in there. Okay. Uh-huh. I also ask, can you give an example of a medication that you may have on any given day. Oh, I'm sorry, not medication, a meal that you have. Okay, sure. Um, for me, I really like salads. 
Um, I am a, <laughs> I live across the street from a Qdoba, so I'm a Qdoba fiend. Um, so, and I'm not necessarily, you know, endorsing that, but I, I get the salads from there and, you know, I try to avoid it, but sometimes I just go ahead and get that impossible meat on there. When I say I try to avoid it, impossible meat, um, though it is better than regular meat, it also has a lot of oil. I mean, it's just processed plants. So you regular meat is processed meat, which is not good. You know, the whole, when you talk about process, the, the process of taking an animal that is completely inedible and turning it into something that's edible is a hell of a process. The process of taking plants and turning it into something that's very similar to it so that we all enjoy that taste, mm, that's, that's, that's different. <laughs> that's extremely different. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, in terms of, so yeah, Qdoba, um, yeah, I like making salads. I, my, I, in terms of salads, I'll cycle through arugula salads um, because of the nitric oxide in there, spinach, um, because of, you know, the, the, the great nutrients that are, that are in there. We're talking about chopping up some, uh, some cucumbers. Of course, we've got to have the tomatoes in there. The thing I want to, I want to make sure that's understood, um, and, uh, you know, also when it comes to cooking things, I like sometimes I like to have a rice base and add in, you know, mushrooms and, and onions. And, you know, I'm just, I like hooking stuff up. I'm just hooking it up. Uh, I couldn't give you a recipe because I don't have a recipe. I just like hooking it up. Uh, and also I like adding seasoning to uh, the food because it's really important. A lot of times people think that, you know, okay, I'm just going to put this in there. I add seasoning to salad, I add seasonings to regular food. Seasoning, which are plants, make stuff taste better. Think about when you're eating meat, if you're eating just a, a burger just came out the freezer and you plop it down and you cook it and flip that sucker over, if you don't add something to it, it tastes horrible. Same thing with chicken. It tastes horrible. It's not until you add the seasonings to it. So the same thing applies to whatever you are eating. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Fred. Yes, everything is good. Hold up. Fred Harris? Oh, okay. Here we go. There we go. Uh-huh. David Cooper in the house. What's going on with you, sir? Um, so yeah, 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 yeah. So guys, um, I do have a couple of people in, in a holding room, but I do want to make sure I get all of these questions in here. Um, once again, in terms of what you need to do on the regular is to pay attention to what you do with your patterns. If you do not do that, you're going to run into problems as you, as you're trying to make this journey, uh, of transitioning from wherever you are that is the most important thing is recognizing that it's a pattern it's what you do every day once you start doing something continuously it becomes uh just a part of your life and that's what you want you don't want this to this journey to be difficult you don't want to think like okay i got to eat a salad again oh, i got to go walk again oh, i got to go do this i got to go to sleep one time oh, my life is just terrible no 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 <laughs> what has happened is we've been trained to believe that the way that we're living right now is normal it's completely abnormal this whole thing with lights very new um before the 19 uh before the 1950s around 1950s uh half of the united states didn't have lights at all now lights are everywhere uh, phones are everywhere. Um, problems are everywhere. So we're in constant level of, of stress and we don't want to, uh, keep doing that. Um, let me see, let me make sure I got everybody in the house. Uh-huh. Yes, indeed. I think I answered that question. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, I thought I saw something that I missed. Uh, what up Kenny F Trinidad? Trinidad and Tobago in here. All right. Um, true business. Can you attain great erectile health using a 80-20 method or 90-10 method or ratio? 80% live food and 20% meat. That's very possible. That That's very possible. Um, the thing about it is that the more that you have plants in your life, the better. Um, I, I'm like you. You know, I, I want to get to that point that I'm, um, I'm balanced and then keep moving. Um, so I got to a point where I was like 80% vegan. Um, yeah, I was making that transition because I was a hundred percent meat and, you know, with ton of junk food and whatever. But, you know, then I made a transition. I went to like a good eight, uh, 80% vegan, 20% uh, fruits and vegetables. Now I'm doing the opposite. I'm taking that to 80% fruits and vegetables, um, beans, legumes, et cetera, et cetera. 
and, you know, uh, 20% vegan. So the more you're going in that direction, the more leeway you get. And here's the interesting thing. This has been my experience. So the healthier you get, the faster you realize when something's off. Let me repeat that again. The healthier you get, the faster you realize something's off. So, you know, um, like I mentioned, uh, I went over to my mother's place and she had made some shrimp and it's like, you know, it's my mother's food. She, she, she's a cook. She, she can hook it up. So I was like, she's like, do you eat shrimp? I'm like, no, I don't eat shrimp anymore, but I sure enough snuck one. And, you know, I can feel it faster. Now, if I had done that five years ago when I eat a whole bunch of junk, when you're eating a whole bunch of crap, you're basically covering it up. So your body's trying to send you a signal and the signal won't show up because you just covered it up with more food. Now it has to, before it can send you that signal, it has to process more food. So you're now in a, a downward spiral because, you know, you're not, your body can't let you know, like, hey, stop doing that. And what will happen is <laughs> you'll get older and you just go ahead and look at people who go, older folks who go into uh, the buffet line. Go Golden Corral is what it's called around here. Uh, Golden Corral. <clears throat> you go to Golden Corral and you just watch older folks walk in. They'll walk in and they, they got a little little step in their step. You can tell it, you know, and it's, they're not spry, but, you know, they getting in. There's some food in there, so they getting in there. And then when they're walking out, they lean in on stuff like, oh, that was all good. And, uh, oh, man, oh, my sacroiliac, my foots, I got uh, my bunions, and uh, my knee, my kneecap. And saying something to me. I mean, they're going to church in their own body. It, it, they just, they'll let you know something's wrong. <laughs> and that's because uh, it's not working out for them well. It, it's not something that you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to pay attention to your body and getting all the right information. Uh-huh. Mm. Uh, I have a question about uh, doing a cookbook or publishing uh, good recipes for optimal health. Yeah. Uh, I had to good suggestion. Good suggestion. I, I had to uh, to to think that through uh, because I re really, to me, it's you know not just the uh, the the food itself, it's the thought processes behind it. Um, there are a quarter million uh, edible plants on this planet, and we have relegated ourselves to like you know roughly a good two percent of that. So, you know, we keep going back to tomatoes and cucumbers. There's more food out there. And the thing that I, you know, a lot of times where I make the recommendations about uh, fruits and vegetables, I'm going off of what information is available, what food is available in this part of the, of the world. Um, and when I say this part of the world, stuff gets shipped in. I mean, there's no banana plants anywhere near me. <laughs> there are no orange trees anywhere near me, but I eat oranges and bananas. Um, but all around the world, humans have existed and eating, eating, um, uh, fruits and vegetables that we've never heard of, and they've been healthy. So it's really not just a question of, you know, uh, um, the recipe. It's really a question of how often are you eating the live food, getting the right energy. So I think that's the most important piece right there. So, uh, so yeah, 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 yeah. All right. I do want to uh, give a shout out because I, I am, I am, I'm running on fumes, guys. I mean, for real. Uh, <laughs> do a five mile walk and, and do, you know, what do we do today? You know, uh, full speed running burpees, uh, planks, uh, up and over all, all types of things, all types of things in that gym. I am, I am mentally toasty old, but, uh, we're going to be doing this again. I do want to, uh, guys stay tuned coming in september we have something um fantastic for you we're making some huge changes uh even for the uh affiliate uh mr Vinny, we're going to be making some uh, uh some changes there and of course as, as far as merchandise is, is is concerned we're coming in with some big merchandise uh available it's a whole lot that's going to be going on so i do want to thank uh everybody who showed up i haven't seen a, a bunch of you guys in a while had to take a little vacation so we can get everything set up. But, uh, you know, we're doing our thing over here. We want to definitely get you going. Uh-huh. Uh, let me see. Mm -hmm. All right. We do have a question, though. I want to have, make sure I get this. What's the difference between, hmm, uh, I guess, a vegan diet and a plant-based diet? Vegan. There we go. All right. So what's the difference between a vegan diet and a plant-based diet? Uh, vegan means that you're eating... Um, you're not eating meat. You're staying away from meat completely, but you're eating processed food. So there's vegan pizzas, there's vegan 
um, donuts, there's vegan ice cream, there's vegan all types of things. Basically, the whole concept behind veganism uh, is that we're going to take food that's bad for you and use plants to make the same food. That doesn't mean the food ends up not being bad for you. There are vegan cookies. You can get fat off of vegan cookies. <laughs> uh, there are vegan ice cream. There's vegan lasagna. Ah, vegan lasagna. You know, um, there's uh, what else we get to? New vegan over here. Crab cakes. Like, oh, yeah. Vegan crab cakes, vegan fish, vegan hamburgers, vegan. I mean, it, the, the vegan section uh, is actually growing astronomically in the grocery stores because people are realizing that meat is not great for you. However, it's still processed foods. Whole plant is just literally that. I uh, have a bowl of oranges, apples, some ginger in there, some garlic. Yeah, yeah, let me just show that I ain't playing with you. Uh -huh. Ashley, can you hand me that plant? The big plant right there. The middle one right there. Uh huh. So yes, yes. Yeah, I ain't playing. I ain't playing. All right. Got the got that going on. Actually, got the actual basil plant. Oh man, I need some do some needs to get healthy over here. Uh, but yeah, you know, uh, actually, basil uh actually helps with blood flow to your penis. So yeah, I'll just go past and just pop a basil leaf off of there. You know, keep it going. Uh huh. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for that. Mm hmm. I'm going to keep on spreading this good knowledge. I mean, you know, um, just to let guys let you guys know before I hop off here, uh, how this all sort of started. Why I'm so passionate about this is actually because of my grandmother. She did a slip and fall, fell down the steps, broke her hip, went to the hospital. She was on two drugs, came out of the hospital on 22 drugs, did the research, come to find out she only needed half of those drugs. And that's when it sort of like pissed me off. It's like, why would they just keep giving her drugs? The thing that actually really did piss me off is that they told my grandmother to, she could eat whatever she wanted to as long as she, you know, so she could keep taking the pills. She was eating, she had so many pills, she wasn't hungry anymore. Obviously her body couldn't process all these pills and then, you know, want more. And, you know, it really just comes down to they're just pushing this stuff onto us and making people believe that I don't have to make a change in my life. All I have to do is take this pill and that's going to do it. These pills are designed to do typically one thing. If you have depression, it's going to help you um, with your brain while simultaneously messing with your Johnson. That's not a good idea. Uh, same thing with blood pressure, same thing with any of these medications. They're just to do one thing. There's nothing in nature that you're going to eat. This apple is going to do several different things. Uh, the orange is going to do several different things. This ginger root, uh, yes, yeah, going to help with digestion. It's also going to help with a lot of other parts of your body. That's the way that nature works. So we want to get, get guys to go into nature and stay away from the medications. Okay. I am now off the soap box. <laughs> All right. Uh, mm. <laughs> I love it, Claude. Also, I added basil to my smoothie tonight as well. Yeah, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Hey, guys, uh, I'm ready to hop off of here. Uh, thanks for all the great questions. We will be back next Thursday. Uh, I like doing this. This is like this is like church to me. Uh, you know, I want to spread the good word. So thank everybody. Thank you, David. Thank you, Smooth. Mr. Vinny, uh, Fred, everybody, uh, uh, Raphael, for hopping on the line with us. Uh, we had another person that was hopping on. I, I didn't get a chance to catch his name. Uh, I want to thank all my international peoples from uh, Guyana to Nigeria to Haiti. Thank you very much. Um, we'll see you next week. And this is Uncle B saying, get your game up. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep consistent. Keep consistent so you can start dominating. That's what we're doing around here in the year 2022. Peace out.